Limited and Happy to see you. I would like to put the program before you as we prepare to begin. Soon we shall be receiving the Honorable Chief Justice. After he has arrived, we shall have the anthems, which will be followed by word of prayer. The Permanent Secretary, Secretary to Judiciary, will, will give his welcoming remarks which will be followed by a presentation on the achievements of the ended judiciary IC strategy 2015, 2016, 2019, 2020, and the origin of ICMIS. And that will be done by the chairperson of Judiciary Technology Law Reporting Committee, Honorable Justice Geoffrey Chiyawire. We shall have introduction to ICMIS, we may have some uh, guests who may not have interacted with ICMIS. So we shall have some introduction to ICMIS, and that will be done by the chair of ICMIS Technical Committee, who is Honorable Head Justice Imachile Tusinje. So let the Justice Imachwe Tubusinje, who is the chairperson of ICMIS Technical Committee, will introduce us to ICMIS, and then we shall watch a video clip demonstrating case management in the ICMIS. It will be followed by a presentation on the role of ICMIS for the members of the bar, the public, and the economy at large. That will be done by the chair, ICMIS Steering Committee, that is Honorable Justice Egonda Ntende. We shall have a presentation on the expectations from the bar. Uh, some members of the bar have been introduced to ICMIS, but not all. So we shall get some expectations from the bar, and this will be done by the president of the Uganda Law Society. It will be followed by a presentation on e-government e support to ICMIS, and that will be done by the executive director, Nita. After that, we shall have a speech uh, by the Honorable Minister of Finance and Planning, Planning and Economic Development. After that, we shall have the address by the Honorable Chief Justice, which will be preceded by the commissioning of ICMIS shall have a short photo session to remember this day when ICMIS is commissioned. I would like to once again warmly welcome all of you and hope you have, we will have a great time around. We are now preparing to receive the Honorable Chief Justice and we start off. Thank you once again for coming. We wish you well. Let's have some short entertainment as we wait to receive the Chief Justice.
My name is Joseph Sinabulia. I am the My name is Joseph Sinabulia. I am the senior IT office of the judiciary. My My name is Joseph Sinabulia. I am the senior IT office of the judiciary. My duty is to demonstrate to you the e-file. My name is Joseph Sinabulia. I am the senior IT office of the judiciary. My duty is to demonstrate to you the e-filing process in ECMIS, but majorly focusing on the key functionalities of case management in ECMIS from the time of filing to the time of disposition. In order to access ECMIS, there are quite a number of factors that you have to put into consideration. One, an internet connection and a mobile device that can connect to internet. Our device should have a web browser installed onto it and to access the home page of the system, the link that leads us to the system Hello. or what the technical people refer to as the uniform Let's raise and locator. receive the Honorable Chief Justice as we prepare to begin our function. Dot judiciary dot go dot ug. That which I have highlighted in blue is the link that will lead us to the home page of our ECMIS system. I will request you to remain standing for the anthems.
I humbly request that we be seated as I invite our worship Valerie Rosemary to invite to God to bless this occasion. Your worship, you are most welcome to say a word of prayer as we call for blessings for this function. Let's all humble ourselves and place ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of us gathered here this morning. We recall with thankfulness the journey that uh, the judiciary has walked of automation since the late 1990s to reach this level of commissioning the use of electronic court case management information systems in the judiciary. May this important event impact positively the administration of justice that all of us gathered here uh, wish to uh, improve. May you bestow your wisdom, your guidance, and blessings on all the ju judiciary top leadership all the leaders who are gathered here in their respective capacities and uh, guide them in the positions you have uh, bestowed on them so that they may continue to champion this cause that we have started. Bless everyone present today and may we be able to share the knowledge and not only walk the journey of ICMIS but also uh, lead and walk it. Grant good health and safety to our loved ones uh, at home. And may the various activities related to the launching of this event be successful through your intervention. In your mighty name I've prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's give a very loud hand clap to the Lord. Thank you very much for the word of prayer. Indeed, it has been a long journey, those who have been there, uh, with the way we have been handling our, our business. It is right and important for us to give thanks to the Lord for having brought us this far for the launch of ICMIS. ICMIS in full is Electronic Court Case Management Information System. We shall be hearing a lot about it, and we shall learn a lot about it, and we shall be using the same in a few days to come. We are, we are, would, I would like now to invite a very important person who has played a very big role in this journey on what we are witnessing today is going to give us his remarks and will come all of us. But before I do that, my Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, allow me to recognize the presence of the Honorable Minister of Finance, Economic Development, Honorable Matia Kasaija. You are most welcome. My Lord, of course, we have the top management is all here, which has also played a very big role in this journey. We have the Honorable Principal Judge, Justice Dr. Zizian Vija. We have the Permanent Secretary, Secretary of the Judiciary, Mr. Pius Vigilmana. We have the Chief Registrar, Our Worship Sarah Langa Siu, the only Chinese who is a Ugandan with the word Siu. My Lord, we shall be recognized to be organizing many others because the whole house is full and all the people invited are here. But in the interest of time, allow me to invite the permanent secretary and secretary to judiciary to give us his welcoming remarks as we embark on our program. Permanent secretary, you are most welcome, sir.
my lord, the honorable the chief justice, my lord, the deputy chief justice, the honorable minister of finance, planning and economic development, my lord, the honorable the principal judge, my lord, justices and judges, the solicitor general, the chief register, and all protocol observed. I welcome you all to this commissioning of the ECMIS, information and communication technology has accelerated the growth of economies globally and helped to improve the quality of life of its citizens. ICT has brought in new ways of creating livelihoods and reduction in poverty levels. ICT has contributed to the change in our everyday life, like moving from writing letters to emails, in some places going to the market, to shopping online, from physical classroom learning to e-learning, from physically bringing prisoners to court, to virtual sessions, and many other things. When I joined the judiciary, I found that ECMIS had been programmed in the five-year ICT uh, judicial strategy, 2015-2016, 2019-2020. There had been demands for re-engineering of court case management information system. And this was in response to the court users' demands that pointed to a digital access to the court case files everywhere and at any time. And this system would partly be a solution to delays and case backlog. So the judiciary carried out a scoping exercise to define the user requirements for such an online digital access to court case management system. These requirements are the ones that were packaged into procurement document referred to as request for proposals. Therefore, I came in at a time the procurement was near conclusion, remaining with a few issues to resolve. Some of the issues were caused by some people who were moving in circles over the issue of payment payment within the dollars or the Uganda shillings. And some officials from Ministry of Finance were insisting that payment should be made in Uganda shillings because the policy that had been recently passed was supposed to be applied. And our argument was that the advertisement, the bidding, the evaluation were made in dollars. So I didn't say the reason why they would insist on paying, on contract signing in Uganda shillings. And the consultant was not ready to accept payment in Uganda shillings anyway. So all of this caused a little delay. But good enough, when I walked to the permanent secretary, secretary of the treasury, I made a case, and the case was hard. And he, he asked me to put it in writing, which I did and he cleared. So I went to the Solicitor General and we got the contract cleared and I signed on 16 September 2019. And I would like to thank the Minister of Finance, represented by the Minister himself, for providing the required funds. Should you clap for him, please? I need more. So when I talk, you crap. The contract amount is $2,510,000, which is equivalent to $9.2 billion. And already, the ministry has released 60%, which I thank you for, Mr. Minister. The project is to take five years, st starting from 2019. In November 2019, I led a team of two technical officers to Yerevan in Armenia 
for a high level kick off meeting of the consultants. And as accounting officer, I had to confirm and satisfy myself of the firm that I was to engage over this period. And I got the first impression of what Synergy International was capable of doing and having done it in other countries abroad and in Africa. For information, this system, court case management information system, is being used in Rwanda, Tanzania, and Lesotho. And outside, we've got Kosovo, Papua New Guinea, Iraq, Colombia, and so on. So for the efficient and effective management of the consultants, two committees were formed. The ECMIS steering committee to provide policy guidance, and the ECMIS technical committee to handle day-to-day -day technical aspects of the consultancy in collaboration with the consultant and the other users. Therefore, today, 19th October 2021, we are witnessing the commissioning of the ECMIS, which I believe will be a game changer because it will help to minimize person-to-person -person contact, which has been a breeding place for corruption. Corru clients will now be able to file online and pay online. In the budget call circular which I have received, I have seen the inclusion of administration of justice program. And again, I want to thank finance for this because with the administration of justice program, it means we are heading to be fully compliant with the program uh, budgeting, uh, program budgeting uh, system. Soon we shall, require, we shall be required to prepare budget framework papers and eventually the policy statement, which we should be prepared along those lines. I would therefore like to put everybody on notice that within the budget of the next financial year, my Lord Chief Justice, we shall minimize provision of stationery to print submissions to court. Why are we doing this? We have to do it to avoid attracting an unnecessary audit queries, because if finance has given us money to go live, then preparing a budget and you put in money for stationery for printing of the, uh, of the, the submissions will be termed as negative expenditure. And I don't want to have those audit queries. Therefore, all judicial staff must, and I want to emphasize, must make the system user-friendly to avoid the inconvenience that may come with the delay to embrace the system. So the sooner you go online, the better for all of us. I want to thank you for coming, and I will come to this great occasion which will mark a new chapter in the history of judiciary. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Permanent Secretary and Secretary to Judiciary. Let's give him another round of applause. My Lord, with your permission, allow me to recognize the presence of the following people who have blessed this occasion. With us is the uh, Honorable Justice Geoffrey Chiriawire. I seated there. He will be giving us a presentation. We shall listen to him more. We have Honorable Justice Stephen Musota, Judge of the High Court, Justice Wilfred Nabsinde, Doctor, she's with us. Thank you very much, Justice Andrew Vashija, for blessing this occasion. I want to recognize the presence of Honorable Justice Gaswaga Duncan. Seems he has stepped out. Honorable Justice Stephen Mubiru is with us. Honorable Justice Damari Rwanga has blessed the occasion. Honorable Justice John Yudis Kitrima is with us. We have the Solicitor General, Mr. Atoke Francis. Thank you very much for coming. I want to recognize the presence of Honorable Lady Justice Businge Immaculate. Thank you very much 
for coming. Honorable Justice Lawrence Tweyanze, thank you very much for blessing this occasion. My Lord, we have the representative of the director, Nita Yu, Mr. Collins Babigarukam. We have played a very big role in this journey. We have the technical advisor to Jeros, Madam Musoke, Rachel, thank you very much for coming. To represent the Commissioner General of Prisons is the Superintendent of Prisons, Job Triyam Haki, thank you very much. My Lord, I will be recognizing others as we move on, but at this juncture, allow me to invite the Chief Registrar, our worship Sarah Ranga Siwu, to take us in the next items. Your worship, you are welcome. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Your Worship, the PRO of the Judiciary, my Lord, the Honorable, the Chief Justice, and all our distinguished guests this morning. Allow me to welcome you once again to this very historic event that we are having here today. My Lord, you will agree with me that this commissioning is evidence that the judiciary is being reborn in terms of a new judiciary is being delivered in this country. And when you all look around you, you will see something new about the judiciary. I hope somebody agrees with me with that. Thank you for those nods. It confirms that we are on a journey to the efficient and effective judiciary that was birthed through the enactment of the administration of the Judiciary Act of 2020. Today we launch an innovation that is very timely because we all agree that uh, with COVID around us, you cannot continue doing things the usual way and judiciary has not been left behind. My Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, allow me as we continue with our program to convey apologies that were received from the Honorable Chief Justice Emeritus Benjamin Odoki. He sent his apology. The Honorable Chief Justice Emeritus Bart Katrebe also sent in his apology, as well as the Honorable Attorney General. My Lord, the Chief Justice, we shall now continue with our program. At this point, we are going to have a presentation on the achievement of the ended Judiciary ICT strategy that is for the financial year 2015-2016 through to financial year 2019-2020 and the origin of ICMIS. This presentation is going to be made by the Chair of the Judiciary Te Technology Stroke the Law Reporting Committee, and that is none other than the Honorable Justice Geoffrey Chirawire. My Lord Justice Chirawire, I welcome you. And as you come, I wish to just clear the air that Justice Stephen Musota is the Justice of the Court of Appeal. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chief Registrar, for uh, your kind introduction. Uh, my Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice of Uganda, my Lord, the Honorable uh, the Principal Judge, uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic uh, Development, Honorable Matia Kasaija, MP, uh, my judge for your information, he just reminded me this morning that I'm his Muzukuru and I agree. Uh, the permanent secretary, secretary to the judiciary, uh, chief registrar, allow me to adopt the protocol uh, that was uh, set out by the uh, PSSJ. Good morning to everybody.
Permit me, my Lord, the Honorable, the Chief Justice, if I may, on behalf of the Technology and Law Reporting Committee, which is your committee, to add a word of welcome to our guests assembled here this morning on this landmark commissioning of the Electronic Court Case Management System, otherwise known as ICMIS. Today, my Lord, Uganda joins a few other African jurisdictions which have at various levels implemented an end-to-end similar electronic case, a court case management system that is from filing to execution. So this is a great achievement for Uganda. I'd like to give you the examples of countries like Ethiopia, like Zambia, Ghana, which has what they call the e-justice system, uh, South Africa and provinces like Houghton, which is using the case lines, uh, Nigeria, which is using the CCMS from the United States of America, Rwanda, which is using the IICMIS system, and recently Kenya uh, in 2020, which set up. We also have regional courts, uh, my lord, uh, ladies and gentlemen, like the East African Court of Justice, which is running the .gov system, uh, the African Court of Human and People's Rights, and the Comesa Court, which is also running the case line system. I have had the privilege to study all the above systems that I have mentioned through one or other means of benchmarking. And allow me, again, if I may, to throw caution to the wind and say that this ICMIS that we are commissioning today is functionally more diverse than all these other systems. Let me also add from a scalability point of view, this system is destined to become the biggest standalone court case management system in Africa. I say this just for example, in uh, South Africa, case lines is being applied only in Gauteng, around Johannesburg, and other states have different systems. So this, as a standalone system, is likely to grow into the biggest in Africa. ICMIS is the center most project of the Uganda's just concluded fourth five-year ICT strategy 2015 to 2020, which was launched in 2016. Save for a few hiccups and the advent, advent of uh, COVID-19, we are pleased to report an on-time delivery of this product. The most significant difference between the success of the ICT strategy 2015 to 2020 and those before it is primarily this, that it is funded by the government of Uganda. And I would like to report that the prime champion of this change was none other than His Excellency, the President of Uganda, who in 2016 directed that the strategy be funded as a project with up to a minimum of six billion shillings a year being made available by the Ministry of Finance. Honorable Minister, you were there in that meeting. And I'd like to take this opportunity, sir, to thank you for working with the directive of His Excellency the President, because today we give you accountability. This single move reversed the chronic underfunding of ICT in the judiciary, and which has plagued previous strategies. The third ICT strategy, 2004 to 2008, had envisaged the re-engineering and upgrade of the current court case administration system, otherwise known as CAS, from a data management system that was only available uh, within uh, the judiciary to one with additional functionalities like filing from other outside the judiciary, and therefore opening up our system to other court users. 
indeed, we were not able to, to take this, but I know that uh, uh, Seychelles was able to upgrade it when, uh, because we, 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 we agreed to, to share this system with the uh, Sister Republic of Seychelles when Honorable Justice Fred Gonda was Chief Justice there, and they were able to, to upgrade it. However, my committee, in consultation with the then Chief Justice, took a policy shift on this one and decided that a new system with the latest possible coding and software be commissioned to upgrade uh, our system of CAS. And that is why today, instead of having CAS Plus, we have ICMIS. So we can say that we have achieved that objective. I'm pleased to say that the strategy is well aligned with all government policies, be it the Second Development National Policy, the National ITC Policy, the National E-Government uh, Policy Framework, and the National Sector ICT and Investment Plan. Our ICT strategy is premised on uh, nine uh, pillars. These involve enabling regulatory environment, adequate management information, reliable uh, hardware infrastructure, adequate software platforms, security for the system, human resource, statistical and resource capabilities, uh, sponsorship and supportive decision making, analytical development, and impl implementation methodologies. This, I'd like to say, Honorable Minister, will be a great resource to you because we'll give you data of what is happening in the judiciary in real time. And sir, as I did mention to you privately, our system is designed that moving forward, all payments of non-tax revenue will be done through the system, which means please expect a rise in non-tax revenue. There will be no leakage. The strategy had 48 independent strategic programs. These included review of existing laws, and we do have now uh, statutory instruments in addition to the ICT laws that Parliament has passed, the provision of laptops to all judicial officers as a standard kit. That is a game changer. It is anybody who now becomes a judicial officer will receive a laptop not a pencil or a pen, as it was in the past. You will receive a laptop. We have designed and rolled out a video conferencing system. Uh, the one at Luzira is the one which is most popular, uh, but we also have others. We are continuing to roll out digital court recording and transcriptions, uh, transcription systems. Uh, we are designing we have designed and installed electronic display boards. I think some of them you may have seen in some of our courts. We have rolled out our ICT network uh, infrastructure across the country with the help of NITAU. And we have also, and this is a, a, an important one, we have also upgraded our own legal research engine called Yuli. And I'm pleased to report, Honorable the Chief Justice, that Yuli is now the third most visited legal website in Africa. Central to the implementation uh, of this strategy was the need to buy, to influence a buy-in of internal stakeholders on the need to migrate from a seemingly paper-based and analog workflow to a digital one. And I think it's the point PSU are talking about. In my humble view, three unique events happened in 2016 that helped to kick off the process that we are commissioning today. The first one was that the ICT Law Reporting Committee was the lead facilitator for the 20th Annual Judges Meeting 
uh, in 2016, which was held under the theme, the use of ICT in the judiciary. Here we had our key note speaker, a leading IT judge from India, the Honorable Justice Talwat Singh, who came to speak to us. It was the first time that the judges were introduced to how this system could look like. The second one was the Stakeholders Validation Conference uh, for the strategy in June of 2016. There, you will recall that we invited and received over 10 international companies which came to exhibit their latest court case management systems uh, for us to see. And it was at this time that people could actually go and see the benefits of a, uh, a system like this to the Ugandan judiciary. It was also at this time that uh, Nita Yu, through its former uh, executive director, Mr. Saka, pledged to walk with us this journey. And I'm glad to see the director of e-government, uh, e Mr. Colin Babirikamu, uh, here with us. Uh, for uh, this uh, thing. We hope that we will continue this partnership. The commitment to funding, which I've already spoken to you about, from the highest authority of the land, uh, His Excellency the President, also took place in 2016. So from 2016, there has been no turning back. To ensure that the correct governance of the strategy is, uh, is done, in October of 2017, the ICT and Law Reporting Committee requested top management to start the process of upgrading the data center into a full IT department. And this has been done. We pray that the whole process is completed. It, was, it would have been impossible for a unit to run ICMIS. But now we have a full IT department which should be able to do so. Let me talk about the evaluation of the last strategy, which has ended. We hired a consultant, an independent consultant, who using the DAC, uh, internationally recognized evaluation system, uh, evaluated how the, uh, the strategy had taken place. It was tested for relevance, efficiency, effectiveness, impact, sustainability. And you could either get a grade of A for very good, B for good, C for problematic, D for serious deficiencies. This is what the consultant told us. And again, I think this will be important information for you, Honorable. Financial performance. A total of 60.2 billion shillings was budgeted for the entire strategy. This would be received from both government and development partners, but the bulk came from government, of which we received 27.3 billion. The evaluation re also revealed that the physical performance of the strategy stood at 42% in spite of that funding and the financial performance stood at 45%. So you have 42 in release and 45, I mean 42 in performance and 45 in release. So it's almost one to one. This shows a, an efficient use of funds that were released by the government of Uganda. As Oliver Twist, we continue to ask for more because this year, uh, we had budgeted 34.7, and uh, we have been provided with 21 billion. So, Honorable Minister, we continue as we provide accountability to ask for more, like Oliver Twist. Now, on relevancy, the strategy scored an A. A, that's the top. I shall just read a few extracts. They said that the strategy document was well laid out and used to solicit government funding and development partner support. On efficiency, 
the strategist squad a B. A key report there was that quarterly and annual uh, ICT implementation performance reports were prepared and presented to the judiciary's top management by the Judiciary ICT Stroke Law Reporting Committee. So I, I say condos to my committee for scoring a B. For effectiveness, we scored a B. And one comment that came out there was the stakeholders, that is to say judiciary staff and stakeholders from outside the judiciary intimated that the ICT was now recognized as an important tool for transforming and promoting other judiciary programs for the institution to provide integrated, comprehensive, and affordable range of readily accessible online services. For impact, it scored a B. And uh, I did read this one, says, despite the fact that the impact made by the policies and strategies uh, are realized after a considerable amount of time, say three years onwards, the immediate impact implied in this case is normally referred to as long-term outcome. Stakeholders, both internal and external, felt that they had been improved access to judicial services due to improved and expanded ICT infrastructure and automation uh, within the judiciary, like mobile money payment, downloadable forms, communication and sharing of information, both internally and externally, video conferencing, among others. So if we were at A level, I think we would have qualified to go for law. We would have scored A, B, 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 B. <laughs> Let me, as I start to conclude, provide uh, some acknowledgments. Allow me to thank the Honorable the Chief Justice, present, and your predecessors for your strong guidance in this area. Thank you, sir. Allow me to thank the entire top management for standing with us. Thank you. Thank you, PSSJ, especially for financial management and ring fencing those funds for IT. This is very important. The money could have gone elsewhere. The Steering and Technical Committee of ICMIS, we thank you. The ICT Law Reporting Committee, I thank you, my colleagues. Last and by no means least, our consultants, Synergy International, who are represented here today. In conclusion, we are not yet there. A lot of training and change management programs still need to be continued. I believe the next ICT strategy will take the judiciary to yet another level, especially given the new normal even after COVID-19. It is now the era of the fourth industrial revolution and the internet of things, so we cannot afford to relax on these achievements. All this notwithstanding, we still need to carry forward the 50% of the unfinished work uh, in the last strategy, especially through the release of more funds. We have been good stewards of these funds, and I believe we deserve more, sir. We are very excited about the commissioning stage, and we anxiously await the Go Live launch. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, my Lord. Another round of applause. You have given us the journey from 2015, 16, up to where we are, very well with the scores. Thank you, thank you very much for those wonderful scores that you have given and put us clearly into the picture of where we are. Uh, my Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, uh, the Honorable Minister, we have proved that we can be faithful with the little, the 9.2 billion. So don't worry when you have to give us more. You can trust that it will be used very, very well. My Lord Chief Justice, allow me to make a few additional recognitions of members who joined us. We have the Honorable Justice Ngonda Ntende, Justice of the Court of
have the Honorable Justice Paul Gardenia. He was Chief Registrar 2016 at the inception of this. We have the Honorable Justice Musa Sekana. We also, thank you, my Lord. We also have uh, the Director Nita, the Director Nita Uganda. The Director Nita Uganda is with us. Yes, uh, you're most welcome, Dr. You can hear. It's on. Hmm? I raise my voice. My Lord, I've been advised to raise my voice. I hope uh, I can be heard. Hello? Hello. Thank you very much, uh, my Lord, the Chief Justice, and all honorable participants. Thank you for bearing with that small technical hitch. We shall continue. I was welcoming and recognizing uh, the Director Anita. Once again, you could stand up for recognition, Dr. Trib Mugasa. My Lord, we also have uh, the representative of the Inspector General of Police is represented by Commissioner of Police, Sewanyana Yusuf. You're most welcome. My Lord, we also have the registrars, the chief magistrates and the magistrates of the judiciary. You can all stand up for recognition, your worships. In attendance, my Lord, also are the senior administrators of the judiciary. Please stand up for recognition. And in a special way, we shall recognize Mr. Chikavi. 
who has been in the IT kitchen, you can wave so that uh, people can put, yes, that is Mr. Chikavi. My Lord, we also have uh, a representative of the Honorable DPP, Mr. Odumbi James. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. My Lord, we have the, the, consult the contractors, their representatives are here. We have Mr. Adam Watson, who is representing the president of Synergy International. You're most welcome. We also have Mr. Adrian Arizera and Mr. Robert Kati. Please stand up for recognition. You're most welcome. They represent the local contractor. Uh, my Lord, Justice Kiriabuire was scoring a couple of committees, and there is one that he forgot to score, and that is the Contracts Committee of 2019. I want to request the members to stand up. I happen to have been the chairperson of that committee, and there is also a due diligence team that went to the U.S. to confirm that, indeed, Synergy existed. My Lord, we feared the ghost procurements were worried of releasing this money to so many people. I think you were part of the team, you are representing them. Honorable Justice Helen Obura is unwell, but she was one of them. So that committee scored an A. Please clap for them. Thank you, thank you very much. My Lord, we now proceed with our program, and at this point we shall be having an introduction to ICMIS, which is going to be done by the chair of the ICMIS Technical Committee, the Lady Justice uh, Immaculate Businge. My Lord, you're welcome. The Honorable the Chief Justice, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, my Lord, the Honorable the Principal Judge, the Permanent Secretary, Secretary to Judiciary, the Chief Registrar, the Directors of NITA present, general stakeholders, members of the ECMIS steering committee and the members of the steering of the technical committee protocol observed ladies and gentlemen i welcome you all to this memorable day in the automation process of the judiciary as we mark the commissioning of ECMIS. And we have been at the helm of the technical committee, which has been working hand in hand with Sibir and Synergy International in the development and production process of electronic court case management information system. May I request the members of the technical committee who are present to stand up, starting with our principal information technology officer, Chikavi, Sinablia, Derek, Julian, and now my lord, Tuayanze Lawrence, the registrar data management, Hawashi Pubarebe, the registrar high court, and the rest. Thank you for the job well done and executed. My Lord, these are people, I think you've been wondering, you must have gotten reports that there were people who were sleeping at the Supreme Court. My Lord, this team was sleeping at the Supreme Court because of ECMIS other than anything else. Thank you, thank you team. As the name of the committee puts it, this is the technical committee that was working hand in hand with the consultant to ensure that all the ECMIS project technical aspects are effectively and efficiently handled. The committee was constituted of registrars, 
and the ICT Technical Committee of the Judiciary. What is ECMIS? And what is it about? One, this is a system which is fully featured and automated and it tracks all the aspects of the life cycle of a case. We've been having our case that was developed some time back, around the 1990s, but it was only used by the internal customers of the judiciary. And that is why ECMIS had to be developed in order to have our external customers access our system. And on that note, we had a stepping stone. When we were developing ECMIS, we had cars where we were starting from. And on that note, can we give a very big applause to Honorable Justice Frederick Egonda Ntende. He gave us the stepping stone for cars. He went to the US, saw something, these people were throwing away those machines. He said, no, in Africa we can do something. Can you give them to me? And that is how CAS was born. Thank you, thank you, my Lord. Number two, ECMIS is founded on the judicial processes and rules. We are not changing anything. We are only making those rules electronically compliant with minimum human intervention. Three, ECMIS is able to facilitate the efficient and reliable collection, organization, distribution, retrieval of significant amounts of case specific data, as well as the process of payment of relevant court fees. Honorable Minister of Finance, since we are integrating with Uganda Revenue Authority and NIRA, we have already created the APIs. And Mr. P.S., this time you will not have issues with our sessional committee in Parliament because it's a matter of clicking on the button and we know how much NTR we have collected. We don't have to go left, right and centre. And the Minister of Finance, we shall be able to defend our figures now with correct data. We shall not be suffering in that aspect because of ECMIS. Number four, we shall be able to generate management reports for decision making, which we were unable to do in CAS. Because here we shall be getting our data put in and we only have to run charts. What are the main functionalities? One, it is role based. If you are a registrar and you log into the system, you will do the work of a registrar. If you are a judge, you log into the system, you will do the work of a judge. If you are a records officer, that is what you will do. It is role based. There are very few individuals like top management who will have all the rights in ECMIS because these are senior managers. They need all the information too. ECMIS, will be having a functionality of messaging. In form of email, we are going to create an app and then there would also be SMS. So for the internal users and the external users, they will be getting information. When you file and the case is ready for hearing, you should be getting that on your text. If you are IT compliant, you will get everything by mail. Number three, we have online case debt entry. All entries in the case are online and an electronic file of the court case will be formed. So you will all be having what we call specific role numbers. When you click onto that, you will see all that is happening in your case, which was filed. Number four, ECMIS is going to integrate with other stakeholders in the management of justice and administration. We have already worked with DPP, prisons, police is still setting up 
the uh, API for the Ministry of Lands. They have set up their API. Uh, my Lord Chief Justice, after this commissioning, we are going to sit back as a technical committee and we create our API such that we immediately integrate with the Ministry of Lands, such that whoever is dealing with uh, cases of land, they are able to look into the system and what is happening to those titles. And all the other <coughs> government agencies, NIRA, Administrator General's Office, and on this note, I would like to thank Nita Uganda. You sent us Julian. She has been wonderful. And we thank you for the technical support. It, the other functionality of ECMIS is calendaring and task management. This feature in the ECMIS provides an efficient way to schedule tasks and events. When you file your case, or you are a judicial officer in charge of a case, this is going to be automatically done. It is up to you to change it manually, but you don't have to struggle left, right, and center carrying diaries here and there. This one will be done automatically. Number seven, advanced analytical reporting. This feature of ECMIS provides for ECMIS data management through production of reports, both standard and ad hoc reports. These reports will be used for planning purposes, resource allocation, performance reporting of courts, divisions, and the other stations as per each judicial officer. Then we have a field and form generation under ECMIS as a functionality. Standard forms are used in court which have been printed or photocopied, but this time we are going to have them in the system. You don't have to look elsewhere. The journey of ECMIS, as the PS has already pointed out, he came in at a time of almost construct signing and those issues of should we pay in dollars or we are going to pay in Uganda shillings. And on that note, uh, my Lord Chief Justice, I would still like to thank Honorable Justice Frederick Egonda Tende. He's the one who led the evaluation committee that came up with Synergy International, which has delivered. With Justice Chiriawire and the rest of the members, thank you so much. The contract was signed on 16th of August, 2019, and it was detailed with different deliverables and the ECMIS project duration is five years, with the last years, two years, which are de de dedicated to maintenance. So Synergy and Sibir are not going anywhere. We are going to have them until the end of five years. The very first deliverable, my lord, was the inception report, which was signed on the 8th of November, 2019. The judiciary and the consultant later on carried out a needs assessment. And this was during, uh, that this was from 11th, 22nd of November, 2019. And during these two weeks, we toured the pilot courts on what was required and what we needed to do together with the consultant. Then later on, we carried out the validation workshops, and this is when COVID entered, and we realized that we needed ECMIS yesterday. All heads of divisions in Kampala with their registrars and Ginger High Court Circuit were called to Judicial Studies Institute where they described their business processes. My Lord, we are not importing anything new in CAS. We are only getting those processes and rules and procedures and just putting them in IT form. Due to the pandemic, we were faced with several challenges, especially between 18th March 2020 and 4th June 2020, which hindered the consultants from traveling and here we had to do everything virtually. 
I would like to thank the steering committee and the technical committee. We have been running online for almost 18 months. Thank you. The system requirement specifications document <coughs> was produced as a result of the needs assessment and it describes the features and the behavior of ECMIS. Then we also have another document which is the systems design document, STD, SDD, which is a document that describes the system requirements, the operating environment, the system, the subsystem, the architecture, the detailed design, process logic, and the external inf interfaces. This is where ECMIS is. And the moment we get an issue, we always go back to this document. And this is a document that we shall keep with it, uh, to further develop ECMIS. It's a document of over 600 pages, my lord. After approval and the sign off of the system requirement specifications, and the system development testing was done. An agile approach of the development was adopted, and this ensured a constant consultation between the judiciary and the consultant. After that, we conducted the user training, and this one was first conducted for the administrators between 3rd and 14th of May, 2021, and then another one was carried out between 17th and 21st of May for both internal and the external users of the system, my lord. However, this one was also affected by the second wave and we had a second lockdown. My lord, there is a lot of technical work that is still going on, but we are ready to go live technically and we are set. Today, the 19th of October 2021, is a special day in our lives as members of the Technical Committee, whereby we are celebrating the birth of a vital deliverable for ECMIS project, which is the commissioning of ECMIS. I thank you all for listening to me. Another round of applause for her lordship. We are not clapping strongly, I don't know. Mm? Let's appreciate those who have really worked behind the scenes for this. You agree with me? Thank you very much. My lord, thank you very, very much for unpacking, unpacking ICMIS to us. I believe all of us have now begun to appreciate what we are talking about. And this is going to be followed quickly by a video clip. You have heard the words, and now you will have to see a demonstration of, of what ICMIS is. My Lord, the Chief Justice, we are going to be running a little faster and adjusting the program because the Honorable Minister has another engagement. And so our program will adjust in the sense that after the video clip, we will have the Honorable Minister speaking. Uh, we would have called him now, but it is important, Honorable Minister, that you see the demonstration of ICMIS so that you're able to clearly and fully appreciate what we are talking about. So the team working on the video, please get it started, as I recognize a very important stakeholder, the president of the Uganda Law Society. Please, uh, Senior Counsel, you're most welcome, and the representative of the Commissioner General of URA, Madam Barbara Ajambo. My name is Joseph Sinabulia. I am the senior IT office of the judiciary. My duty is to demonstrate to you the e-filing process in ECMIS, but majorly focusing on the key functionalities of case management in ECMIS from the time of filing to the time of disposition. In order to access ECMIS, 
there are quite a number of factors that we have to put into consideration. One, an internet connection and a mobile device that can connect to internet. Our device should have a web browser installed onto it and to access the home page of the system, the link that leads us to the system or what the technical people refer to as the uniform resource locator is ikimis onejudiciarygoug That which I have highlighted in blue is the link that will lead us to the home page of our ikimis system. Whoever has to gain access to the ikimis system must have a username and the password that grants them permissions to access the system. On our home page, we have a button for registration. When you click on it, it opens up a form which allows you to input the various required information. And this information will be captured to allow you to acquire a username and password as well as receive notifications both on email and on your phone from the Ikemi system. So assuming my first name is Peter and my last name is Moviru, then after inputting all the required fields, as you've seen, all the mandatory fields have the asterisks in red before them, so I've tried to input them. Then I'll accept the terms and conditions as stipulated on this page. And then I'll proceed to click the yellow button that allows me to create an account that will allow me gain access to the system. So on our next page, we receive a notification that via user Peter Moviru, an email with an activation link, has been sent to p at gmail.com. Please note that the activation link is valid for 24 hours. So we are going to check our Gmail and we shall have to find this notification that allows us to activate our account. So when we click here, this will be the activation, well, the activation email. Welcome to electronic court case management information system application. Your username is this. Please click on the button below to activate the account. The green button is what we click on in order to activate our account. When we click on it and our account is activated, it will redirect us to the login page. So when we get to the login page, our username that we created was Pimubiru and our secret password is hidden with those characters. At this point in time, we have the credentials that permit us to log into the system in order to access the various roles that we have to play in the system. So we shall click on login in order to gain access into the system. So when we gain access into the system, we are welcomed by the page that defines the ikemis structure. It has the top menu bar with the word ikemis and the details of the person who has logged into the system, assuming Peter Mobiru is our plaintiff or litigant outside there. So Peter Mobiru has a profile that we've created while generating a username and password. And still there is a logout button for each time you gain entry into the system, there should be a point for you to exit the system. So the bell-like icon represents the notification that we'll be receiving as a party in a case. So when you click on it, it should be able to give you all the notifications. So for each process that a case goes through in court, there will be notifications that will be instantly sent to the party in or from Ikimis. The calendar icon will represent a series of events that are pegged to your case or to the court process relating to your case. All the various events that are relating to your case will be captured on this calendar and the system will automatically populate them on this calendar 
on the particular dates when they are scheduled to appear or when they are scheduled to take place. And it is represented by the app icon showed above. For those that need assistance on using EKMS, we have a user manual that is populated under here. We have online help that will allow us to interact with an agent online. If we seek assistance on how to use the system, we shall be clicking there. So the first menu item that we have on our left navigation bar will be the workspace. The workspace will comprise a list of all the cases where you've been a party. For example, if you've been a plaintiff in one case, you should be in position to see all the cases where you've appeared as a plaintiff. If you've been a defendant in another case, you should be in position to see all those cases where you've participated as a defendant. Then, um, information relating to the payments that you've made will be captured on this payment list. The next icon as an ordinary user that we see is the icon that relates to useful links. So Ekimis is going to be self-contained, bringing on board all the useful links that you would have accessed outside Ekimis putting them into one container of Ikimis so that we are able to access them through a single interface. Next, if we want to search for any document relating to our cases, we can use a documents link that leads us to this open window where we can search that document by content. If it's a judgment, we shall put the keyword relating to that document that we want to search. And uh, if there are any parties in that content, if uh, Peter Mobiru has ever been a part of that case and there was a judgment passed in favor of Peter Mobiru, so we can use Peter as one of the contacts in the judgment. And the keyword is judgment. Then document type, we can still select from here, judgment. We can still add more additional fields if we want to have an extensive search. And after inputting all those fields, we can click on search and the system will be able to return results relating to that particular kind of document that we are searching for. So for now, we've demonstrated in summary what the ECMA structure looks like. Our next step is to demonstrate how a litigant if files a case in ECMA. So if one wants to file a case through ECMS, we will click on the yellow button labeled e file new case. First of all, it will capture the court level. Assuming our case is going to be filed in high court, then we select the court name where he wants to e file this case. We select the division, assuming it's civil division. Then we select the case category. Um, then we put the subject matter to prove value, million. Uh, the subject matter to prove value relating to our civil suit that we are registering in court is 600 million shillings. The subject matter is rent areas and our grounds of claim is breach of contract. Below this form, there is a section where we have participants. So we shall click on create individual. Then a new form will pop up. It will ask for the first name, Peter, last name, Moviru. And uh, we can select the date of birth. Um, so after inputting that basic information, you see the only mandatory fields that we have here is the first name, last name, and date of birth. We save. So we are going to relate this party to the account that we created under the section of related user on the same form. So we click add. The first name was Peter. So we search for the different Peters that we have in the system. The Peter that we are looking for is Peter Moviru. We select him and Add. Okay, after relating Peter Mbiru as a related user, we shall save 
and close. Peter Moviru is going to access the system as a plaintiff. So we add him to this case, to the party role of the plaintiff. We are going to create the defendant. In order to add the defendant, I will click on the add button. Then I will create the details of the defendant. So after selecting those few mandatory fields, I will save and close. So as you can see, we've created a second party called Paul Mosoke, and we are going to give him a party role of the defendant. We will also be able to access this case as a defendant. If we are told we have our advocates, we can still add them to this case. So we shall go to the advocate section, click add. Then we shall just search for some advocates, add them to this case. And at this point in time, we have a plaintiff who is me, Peter Mobiru, represented by the advocate, Ayambi and the company advocates. So at this point in time, we have the basic information about the case. So we shall proceed to save and close. So at the point of saving and closing, we shall be able to receive a draft case number and as you can see this will be act, acting as the status bar that will be showing us the, all the progress that happens on our case now the next thing we shall do is to file a plain first document that we expect to appear on our electronic file there are quite a number of cards that we have here that keep track of the relevant documents or the various documents that are attached to our case there are any pleadings that we want to upload on this case, we shall go to the pleadings card. There are any court fees that or payments that we want to make relating to this case, we shall go to this payment card. If there are any notices, hearing notices, uh, uh, notice of appeal that we want to view on this case, they will be under the notices uh, card. If there are any affidavits that are filed in, relating, in relation to this case, the affidavits will be found under this card. All the summons emerging out of this case will be captured under the summons card. There are any court sittings that have been set up for hearing this case, we shall be viewing them under the court sittings card. There are any warrants will be appearing under the warrants card. All orders emerging out of this case will be under the orders card. There is any judgment that is relating to this case. It all ruling that is relating to this case, it will be appearing under the rulings card. Any agreements or mediation report shall be accessing them under the agreements and reports card. If there are any decrees, they will be captured under the decrease card. If there are any exhibits that we want to track, if at all there are any exhibits that we want to track relating to this case, we shall keep track of those exhibits using the exhibits card. If there are any other documents that are out of the categories mentioned there above, we shall have those other documents captured here. Any notes that we want to take, be it a judge who wants to take some notes in the system relating to this case, they will be captured under the notes card. If there are any miscellaneous applications or revisions arising out of the main suit that we are filing, they will be filed under this so that they are intact with the main suit. If there are any complaints, Relating to this case, they will be filed under here and they will be accessible to the Inspectorate of Court. And the last card that we have shall be showing us all the documents attached to this case. Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Senavulia. We will end here and continue later in the interest of time. I believe the demonstration has been clear and we are all understanding and agreeing that this indeed is a game changer. My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice, at this point I invite the Honorable the Principal Judge to invite the Honorable Minister to make his remarks. My Lord, you're welcome. My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice, my Lord, the, the, the Honorable Minister, uh, all protocol observed. My role here is simple 
and, and that is to invite the Honorable Minister uh, to make his remarks. Honorable Minister, you're welcome. Thank you. My Lord, the Honorable Chief Justice, my Lord, the Honorable Deputy Chief Justice, my Lord, the Honorable Principal Judge, those these Lords of the Justice of the High of the Court of Dikacha, my Lord, the Chief Justice Emeritus, ah, he's not here, the Chief Registrar, the Permanent Secretary, and all of you friends. I'm very glad that we have reached where we have reached. The English have a saying, time is money. Hitherto, as you all know, I'm repeating what you know, is that to process a case or even to process a payment in my ministry there before we went dot com that's the word we use down there dot com it will take time but today you can access information everywhere in the world the other day i was talking with my daughter and uh, there is a condition i have it's not fight so don't worry that i will die <laughs> soon <laughs> die, i will die but not soon then i said you god tell me what this disease is all about. So she took her phone, Google. The whole information was there. What causes it and what can be cured, whether it can be cured, and what are the drugs. So she now she starts to say now that I'm coming to become a doctor. I'm going to prescribe for you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very nice that the judiciary has adopted this system. I'm sure now case resolving is going to be expeditiously executed because all the information will be put in one simple state statement and it can be, um, it can be accessed and easily. I am a victim, as you know, he knows. <laughs> I am a victim. I had a case, somebody took me to court, 19... 95, the course which my Lord Justice was resolved only about a year ago. <laughs> this was a land case matter where I, had, had, I, I, I couldn't access a bank to lend money. You know, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, a, a farmer. I couldn't access. When I would go, there is something, the title is, has a problem because the other guy had put a kind of court injunction on, on, on the title. And it took all that long time. So you can imagine the, the time I could now be ma maybe a multi millionaire now. But you could see poverty on me now because of the system. Uh, the system. So really, I'm very excited. And uh, I congratulate you for having got this technology on your side. Two. The issue, of course, this is of unlock, un, ah, unlocking funds. The Chief Justice, when he was addressing us the other day at Coloro, he revealed something that excited me. He says, in the commercial court, there are cases that have locked up, Mr. Minister, do you know? I said, how much money? I say, he said, I said, no, I don't know. He said, four trillion. I hope I'm quoting you correctly. Four trillion. I said, sure. He said, yes. You facilitate us, give us money. I will very likely get you that money into the treasury. So as a minister of finance, really, finance, and your team, I congratulate you. You 
and I look forward for you getting more resources for me, not only for the judiciary, but for other sectors of the economy. He was also telling me this morning that you, know, you collect the NTR, non-tax revenue. I also look forward to that. Now it, it will become, I think, automatically to, it goes to the Bank of Uganda or it comes to the Consolidated Fund or it will be coming to the Treasury first and then we take it to, to the Bank of Uganda. I, it should go to Bank of Uganda, Consolidated Fund first, because I must appropriate that money. I must go for Parliament to appropriate that money. So all in all, I don't have much to say. It's just to thank you, to congratulate you for having taken on this, this uh, uh, adopt, uh, um, purchased, I think you purchased, of course, we purchased, purchased the system that will make you very efficient, which will help investment people. Someone, I think there was somebody who was telling me there was a case of somebody wanting to put up a, a factory, an American factory, an American person. The land had a bit of a problem. Eventually, the lady was frustrated and had to go away. So this now is history. I look forward to having a vibrant judiciary, a vibrant society, and a vibrant economy, and a vibrant country which we all can enjoy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd forgotten. You know, in my language, we have a saying, uh, the one who scratches you comfortably, you also scratch him comfortably. So when you give me revenue, I will be able to answer very positively when you put in your demand. Let's appreciate the Honorable Minister of Finance. Honorable Minister, thank you very much. We look forward to a very, very serious scratch from you, and we are confident that we have your support. Thank you for your support thus far. Allow us to thank you in a special way with a very, very thunderous round of applause. Let us appreciate the Honorable Minister for the support to the judiciary in so many ways. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for sparing the time and being here with us. We truly appreciate it. With the permission of his lordship, my lord, I think we will allow the honorable minister to, to leave and go and have that other engagement. And I'll request the, my twin brother, Kakuru, the PS, to escort the honorable minister at that time. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, 11.30, so you still have some minutes with us. That is very good. Now, as we all know, we are ready as judiciary. We have issued notice of our readiness, but there are key stakeholders that we work with. And one of them is the Uganda Law Society, the members of the bar. At this point, we'll continue with our program by having a presentation on the expectations from the bar. And this is going to be delivered by none other than the president of the Uganda Law Society. Senior Council, I welcome you to give us those expectations. You're most welcome. My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice, the Honorable my Lord, the Honorable the Principal Judge, the Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, uh, the Solicitor General, please allow me to respect the protocol as has been outlined very ably by those that have come before me. It is an honor to be here, and it's an even bigger honor to speak after the Honorable Minister. So I'm feeling very big right now. Um, our expectations are very brief. 
because first of all, I want to say thank you so much to the Honorable the Chief Justice and the Judiciary and all the stakeholders that have participated in coming up with ECNIS. I think we should give them all a big hand clap. I bring greetings from the Uganda Law Society and we're very excited because we're going to be the main, uh, some of the main users of this system. And our formative law, the Uganda Law Society Act, uh, places an obligation on us to assist the government and the courts in all matters affecting legislation and the administration and practice of law in Uganda. Our membership is 3,700 advocates. And it's upon this background that I'd like to convey a sincere gratitude to the Justice, uh, to the Honorable Chief Justice for extending this invitation to me, as well as according us the platform to present to you our expectations from the bar. Um, ECMIS, uh, from the bar perspective, what does this mean for us? It really means that we are going to be able to file our cases online, we're going to be able to send online notifications, we're going to be able to make online payments, and we're going to be able to execute uh, and carry out all other, uh, all other procedures electronically. We believe that it will deliver a 360 degree impact on court processes, and we believe that it will actually contribute uh, to reducing case backlogs and time lags. However, before we go to these expectations, I want to state that the most important thing in this system is going to be access. And I'd like to request uh, the Honorable the Chief Justice that we shall ensure that only registered advocates and court users will be able to access this system. We will avail our membership database. We will avail our IDs. We have, we have ID numbers so that we can remove the issue of quack lawyers and what we've been suffering in the court system. The first point I'd like to raise is data privacy and protection. We really require data privacy, which is focused on defining who has access, as I've said, to data, while data protection focuses on applying these restrictions. In this regard, we hope that access will strictly be limited to stakeholders in a particular case um, without chances of database edits or manipulations, without flag-offs or notifications to parties in a matter or even a judicial officer. We hope that for cases, uh, delicate cases like cases of, of children that require sealed records sometimes, child offenders, or children that have been involved in sexual offenses, who've been victims, cases where vi there's victim or witness protection necessary, we hope that there'll be some special requirement uh, provided for this kind of information. The second is capacity of the system process administrators to efficiently handle successfully submitted entries. As the bar, we humbly request Request and hope that the system process administrators, such as the registry clerks or court clerks and process servers, will be in a position to handle files in a timely manner so as to meet set schedules. This will probably require for them to be trained and given the proper access, but we also hope that we shall again restrict this to only the clerks that are dealing with particular cases to avoid a lot of interference that we've had with files missing and files being interfered with. We hope that this will be um, handled, my lord. System readiness to handle a plethora of multiple server requests and responses in real time. We have been told that the ECMIS connects NITA Uganda, sorry, NIRA Uganda information, URA information, and it also contains information from other stakeholders. We hope that um, the requests and, and, and responses, even the requests for assistance, the requests for registration and filing, that they'll be handled in real time. And we hope, uh, again, this is a request to NITA Uganda, that they'll, they'll pay special uh, attention to this particular system, because I think we saw what URA was suffering with, with their system before, when there'd be 
a timeout. Uh, there would be a serious problem at the border. I had to stay at the border three days just to have my car processed at some time back when I was a young lawyer. And one of the things that happened that time was that there was a downtime. So we hope that this can be uh, taken care of. And maybe we should also allow for, um, which is the next one that I'm going to, flexibility again. Uh, we've, we've, this is a request that has been made by our members, but I think there's also an electronic option. Flexibility from the bench in accepting traditional methods of court practice where circumstances permit as advocates fully adapt to the new system. We've been informed that we're going to get three. <laughs> We've been, <in laughs> I'm, I'm getting threatened by the PS. <laughs> We've been in informed that we're going to get three. Uh, I hope I'm protected, my Lord. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, we're going to get about three months uh, time for all the advocates. We're, we're also going, we want to commit that we are preparing lists of trainers who we can have trained at the Judicial Training Institute and then have them go out and train all our advocates. But we are not really making this request for those that are going to be behind. We want to move with the times. But we also understand that sometimes there are offline aspects. There are times that there will be, uh, the, the system might be affected either by electricity, downtime. So I hope that the system can be um, allowed to have uh, offline access where you can still do, do a few things or uh, make a few uh, changes or submissions so that we do not lose a lot of time. I don't know how this will be dealt with, but we do think that it's an elephant in the room with the realities we have with electricity in Uganda with how far the courts are and uh, also the issue of data, our, our, our fiber. We have continued fiber cuts all over when the roads are being constructed. So these are, these are the realities we exist in and we need to also make sure that we provide for them. We look forward to continued intensive countrywide training programs for advocates. This, uh, I think that this has already started, and I want to thank the JTI and the, and the team that has been responsible for this, and the top management of the judiciary for prioritizing advocates, my lord. As the bar, we hope that we shall continue to engage, and I hope that when we have a pilot project, that advocates will be actively involved so that we get all the necessary feedback in order to make sure that we close all the, back, all, all the gaps. Inclusion and mass sensitization to the general public. Uh, we've seen that the ECMIS allows members of the general public to also be part of this. I do not know what role the fourth estate will play because recently we've had the fourth estate being actively involved in our cases, uh, what access they'll have and, and things like that. But we also need to educate the public because they have a general suspicion of anything electronic Already, they've, they've, they've had issues with our systems when they think that there are delays. Uh, so a, a, a friend of mine from Kanungu told me, my, court, my case was taken to the Court of Appeal. I think they've just, I think that's an archive where they just throw our cases. I don't know where the Court of Appeal is. So I'm glad, my Lord, that you're going to send Courts of Appeal all over the country. People will understand what they are. But I think that the online, uh, the ECMIS will then create even more mystery to those uh, ordinary users that do not understand. So we have to sensitize them and increase their trust in this system. As we speak, only about 5% uh, of Ugandans are willing and even able to access our judicial processes, our judicial system. But I'm hoping that the ECMIS will actually increase access. We want to appreciate the judiciary for the efforts that are being made, first of all, uh, also to thank the Honorable Minister for the financing that is leading to all these changes. We're getting more judges and more judicial officers, and now I'm hearing they're all going to have electronic uh, uh, ca uh, case, sorry, <laughs> they're going to have laptops and, and, and gadgets. And as, you, as lawyers, of course, we also exist in practical realities. If you go to Council Okuku in Busia, you're going to have to go and train him. He retired, I think, from uh, the judiciary in 1985. 
So we're going to, we have some practical realities. We're going to work together, but I would like to commit from the bar that we are ready to take this on. We're very excited and we want to thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to present our expectations. Thank you. Let's give another round of applause to the president. Thank you very much, the president, for that assurance on the readiness of the bar. The bar we are talking about is not the other one of drinks. <laughs> this is the place where the, in a court where the, the lawyers sit, it is called the bar. So those are members of that place that are ready to embrace ICMIS. My Lord, with your permission, allow me to invite another presenter who is, give, who is going to give us an insight on e government support to ICMIS. This is going to be done by none other than Mr. Collins Mugasha Babirukamu, who is the director of e government services. Nita, you. You are most welcome, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, my Lord, the Chief Justice of Uganda, uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, uh, Honorable the Principal Judge, uh, Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court present, and all protocol uh, observed. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, first of all, I want to introduce uh, my Executive Director, the ED of NITA, Dr. Hatwib Mugasa, uh, who came in a little after the introductions. He is handling a delicate directive from His Excellency and uh, he's having to juggle a couple of things this morning. So I was only a substitute, but allow me to, he's gave me permission to carry on. Um, let me also thank Julian, uh, Julian, of course, uh, who you all know, who has been walking this journey with you Reju at the back there from Nita, and I'm glad that she was permanently here all through these years. She's part of my team, but I was hardly seeing her. She gave her full focus to the judiciary. Allow me to, as, as I get the presentation up, uh, allow me to first of all uh, really congratulate uh, the judiciary on successfully you know, getting to this point of commissioning the ICMIS and coming this far. Um, reports show, because NITA is a regulator, but also an implementer, and we oversee and monitor. So, sorry for that interruption, uh, but I have agreed with him. As we earlier said, the program will keep switching and switching because of the program of the minister who would like to listen to the chief justice before he leaves. So you allow us to switch the, is this, he will speak after this and we have agreed with him and we are sorry for that. Allow me now to invite the chief registrar who will invite the chief justice to speak to us. Your worship, you are welcome. My Lord, the Honorable the Chief Justice, I warmly inv invite you to come and make your address. I thank you that you have allowed that the program will still continue even after your address. My Lord, you're most welcome. We, we, we apologize for this irregular 
interrupting interventions. Honorable Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, uh, I apologize, I have to remove this. It saves my life, but we are not very friendly with it. It chokes my nose and uh, gives me a lot of suffering, so you'll understand when I have to speak without having to put it on. My Lord, the Principal Judge, Justices and Judges of our Courts of Judicature, the Executive Director of uh, NITA, representatives of the various heads of institutions who are here, the peers, judiciary, the Solicitor General, the Chief Registrar, distinguished members here present in your various capacities. Honorable Minister, before I read this speech, I, I, you know, there is, <coughs> there is, there is what you, you cited the, the English saying, let, let me just say another one, a blessing in disguise. I am happy that your case took that long in court because now it makes my work easier. When I say I need resources, I now know I have a partner where, where the other basket is kept or where it is controlled. I say this because, and I've said it before, it is within our capacity, it is within your capacity just a little bit of sacrifice. You cited my statement about the four trillion shillings locked up in the commercial division in Kampala. But all the other cases in the country handle commercial cases. If I were to speak, and I think I'll ask my permanent secretary to cause our team to find out how much money is actually locked up in commercial disputes. And then how much money is locked up in land dispute like yours? How many people have failed to be millionaires the way you failed because their cases are locked up in land disputes? Then we can appreciate. Then when I come to you, I don't even to argue, say no, you're talking to a convert, which, which you seem to be, which is quite good. So I thought, <clears throat> I thought I should use this opportunity to thank you, really to thank you. Uh, your presence here is evidence that you understand the place of the judiciary, the role of the judiciary, that with a little push, the judiciary has got the capacity to make enormous contribution to the socioeconomic development. It's, it's, it's the, type, the type of power which is latent. You just need a little to make it kinetic and it is within the powers of the government. Now, uh, <clears throat> my speech says this. I am profoundly honored to welcome you all to this long-awaited commissioning of the electronic court case management information system known by the, better known by its acronym ECMIS, which has been explained. This step undoubtedly provides a major building block to another e-government service in Uganda, and particularly to the administration of the justice sector. Today, it is important to acknowledge that the advent of information and communications technology, ICT, is fundamentally changing the way people work, learn, and interact. 
ICT is being adopted in all aspects of society to facilitate online service delivery. Both government and the private sectors have to move in that direction and have to adopt the emerging new technologies if they are to match and fit within the current global trend. As we inevitably brave to embrace the fourth industrial revolution, we have a duty to equip ourselves with relevant modern IT skills in order to survive the contemporary storms and remain relevant to the modern clientele that we have to serve. Let, let me add this. We are now in the fourth industrial revolution. It's being ushered in. The first industrial revolution, which was characterized by mass production, use of factories, operated for 100 years, or thereabout. And then we had the second industrial revolution, the use of steam engine, the rails, and massive transportation of goods that had been produced massively. Then it took another 100 years to get the third industrial revolution, which is information technology. Now, between the advent of information technology and then info information technology data processing and so on and so forth, which is really the fourth industrial revolution has taken only decades. <clears throat> there is the likelihood that before the fourth industrial revolution has set in, there'll be a fifth, sixth, so, so industrial revolution. So what does it mean? If you are tied down by that saying that tradition dies hard, you'll be left behind. By the time you pick interest in the computer, people will be in the eighth industrial revolution when you are still in the fourth or the third. So the point being made here, and, and this is really the essence of ECMIS for, for, for the judiciary, is that it is the way to go. It is neither nor, it is, it is the way to go. You either take it or you lose out altogether. <coughs> The National Development Plan 3 dedicates in Chapter 14 to digital transformation with key results areas that include increase in the ICT penetration, reduction in the cost of ICT services and devices, creation of 150,000 direct jobs within the ICT sector, increase in the proportion of the population accessing services online to 25% and providing 80% <coughs> of government services online. The efforts above illustrate government's efforts towards the need for automation. Judiciaries all over the world, Uganda inclusive, are fighting two major bottlenecks, hindering justice delivery. That is delay in the administration of justice with the resultant case backlog. It has been correctly observed that application of ICTs is part of the key solution to these bottlenecks. L let me elaborate on this. When I was appointed a judge, but, but even before that, when I was a practicing lawyer in town, you'd come to court the judicial officer, judge, or, or magistrate was also listening to the evidence, having to assess the demeanor of the witness, but also doing stenography. Because the judge had to write down in long shorthand, so that is meaningful. But also to understand, is, is, is the minister being genuine about this or that? I, I know of two judicial officers. One I knew as a practicing lawyer is, is now long gone to, to, to be with the Lord. 
if he was if he was writing doing, he would write D, straight line, and then come down. That could be doing, it could be driving, it could be dating, it could be anything. Then another one whom I was uh, favored to be a judge with together, if, if I had sought his permission, I would have named him. His writing was so bad, he himself could not read it. <laughs> and <laughs> there was a secretary whom he had to move with in every station. And this, this was actually not even a secretary, this is uh, these people who is below Mr. Pierce, what is it? It's not a secretary, Sec secretary, of, just knowing, uh, huh? copy typist, thank you, copy typist. Who could read this man say, it is then the judge would say, yes, it is this. <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm making is, with all that, how long would it take for the case to be had? I was appointed a judge in 2008, and I, I, I experienced being a stenographer and a judicial officer. I think, I think the first case that I did not have to be a stenographer was the Kampala bombing. The Kampala bombing case, when the, the proceedings, when the proceedings were typed out, back to back, ten box files. 10 box files, I don't know whether they, they appealed, and I pity the appellate judges. 10 box files, proceedings alone. Now imagine that I had to write all that by hand. I think I, think I would have left the case a sick man, at least I would have been disabled. So it would not have taken the two years it took, it probably would have taken five years, because then everybody would have had to go with the pace of my writing, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> now, as we've been told, in 1997, the judiciary of Uganda embarked on the di digitization process, which has evolved over time from CAS to ECWIS, which we are launching today. Current, in <clears throat> current information communication technologies used by the judiciary. The judiciary has implemented a number of ICTs that include one, video conferencing system that has been very instrumental, instrumental during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now we've been in, in some limited cases. Prisoners are attended to from that remote, using that remote system. They are in either Luzira, Italia, or name it. At, some, at times they are even far away. And, and we use video conferencing. And it's quite effective. Then the worry of the Commissioner General, which, which was saying, look, if one of the remand prisoners or the appellants is brought to court, just one person, and gets COVID, my place is so vulnerable, I, I, it, it would be a disaster. So, so this, this has helped that, you know, they don't have to, to move the, 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 the handle from uh, uh, the prison locations. Then B, the digital court recording and transcription system, the one I was talking about, and the one where we need to invest on the recruitment, on training of personnel for transcription, for immediate transcription the way it is done in parliament. You and me, we've been in parliament, you know what the importance of transcription. So this really speeds up the judicial process, the hearing process, because the judge sits, if there's something which he wants to note, he writes a line, the rest is written by the machine. And then somebody else transcribes and brings. And if he thinks there is a mistake, so no, I didn't hear this, they go back and verify, and either he realizes he was wrong, or the transcriber realizes they were wrong, and so on and so forth. Electronic display boards designed and installed in our courts. Now, if, you, if I take a walk with you, you'll find information. If your case was still on, and it was coming next week, you now see it running. Honorable Mat Matia Kasaija versus somebody, and, and inform you what date and so on and so forth. 
uh, we have also equipped our court stations with computers to a coverage of 95% now, <clears throat> except where we have had challenges with structural issues like power. We provided access to online digital legal databases like Nexus Nexus and the Uganda Legal Information Institute. I am sure the, the president of the Uganda Law Society can, can attest to this. It's really, really useful, yeah. Uh, which have greatly boosted legal research. The judiciary will continue to roll out all these ICT initiatives to cover all our court stations across the country. Why ECMIS? In 1997, the judiciary developed a case management system called the Court Case Administration System, CAS, to internally manage cases at the time when the cases were manually filed in court. Over the years, the judiciary has received a number of user requirements, both internal and external from different stakeholders. These requirements include online access to the system, e-filing, queue management, and e-file of a case, system integration <coughs> with stakeholders like the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, the National Identification and Registration Authority, the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, the Uganda Police Force, the Uganda Prison Service, among others. These new user requirements necessitated an overhaul of the cash system. These requirements pointed to a system that is electronic, that supports integration, and one that is able to manage court cases. Hence the name Electronic Court Case Management Information System, uh, ECMIS. A consultancy was procured in 2019 for the design, development, and maintenance of the Electronic Court Case Management Information System, ECMIS. Since then, work has been ongoing, guided by the Judiciary Technical Committee. The development of the ECMIS has undergone the professionally agreed process, processes for the development of an ICT system, notably a high degree of user involvement. The consultant has worked closely with the judiciary to develop ECMIS that we are commissioning today. The major features of the ECMIS are the ability to digitally or electronically file your case in court from the comfort of your chambers or wherever you are. The 24-7 access to the entire digital case file the ability to receive notifications about any process or action on your case in court through SMS, on your mobile phone, or email. The ability to assess court fees and pay them electronically. The ability to integrate, integrate with other stakeholders in the administration of justice. The above features and abilities point to a mobile court now in your hands accessible via your mobile device. One can e-file from anywhere and at any time of the day, unlike the current system that is limited to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Now you can file at 11 p.m. and you'll be given the date since it is before midnight, or you can file at uh, 1 a.m. and you're given the following day's date. So re really, you can see this is a game changer, I think the expression. Uh, one, 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 one of our presenters here said. Training of the users on the ECMIS. End user training is a very important component in the system's development life cycle. Every user to any IT system must know in detail what their roles will be, how they can use the system, and what the system will do or will not do. The success or failure of well-designed and technically elegant system depends on the way it is operated and used. Training also involves familiarization with the RAN procedures, which involves working through a sequence of activities 
needed to use a new system. Honorable Minister, just last week, uh, I was asked to, to open a training of judicial officers. <clears throat> After delivering the, the opening remarks, I, I, then I converted myself into a student. So, so I had the, the, the distinction of being the chief guest, but also a student, a very rare experience. And, and I can say from my personal experience, I also belong to your category. I, I, the, the computer is a stranger to me. Yes. I remember when I went for my master's, I'd never sat behind in anything close to a computer. I had to learn the hard way to type all my work. I thought they would, you would just write and but <laughs> type all my work. I had to learn to type, which I still do. I type using my index fingers, but I can type faster than those who, who type like this. So, so it's, 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 it's just learning new things and, and taking it seriously. The one day training I got is not sufficient, and I did say it. There will be need for continuous training. So, Honorable Minister, when, when you see in our budget proposals, there is a hefty sum for training at least you can understand. We, without training, without the requisite training, you can have a huge elephant and, and, and without much impact. So there, there are areas and we will have time to continue with engagements in these areas and, and we really make this process succeed. <coughs> the judiciary has for the last two months trained its internal staff and a few external stakeholders on the ECMIS operations. It should be observed that training is a continuous process and the judiciary will continue to train both the internal and external stakeholders. Uh, Madam President, Uganda Law Society, we know members of the bar have requested for more deta detailed training on the ECMIS including training of their trainers. I am in total agreement. The Uganda Law Society is the principal, is a principal user of this innovation. Without members of the bar finding this user friendly, I don't see how far we can go with this. I, 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 I would be more comfortable with this kiosk manned by lawyers or legal assistants than kiosk manned by, manned by somebody because he, he, he went to senior two or went to senior four and can touch a phone or something like this. I, I would be more comfortable with members of the legal profession taking charge and owning this process for the benefit of justice seekers in this country. So, so any time, and we will not tire if, 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 if the members of the legal profession get training tomorrow and they think they should get training the other day, the following week, the following month, we will. Capacity being, uh, capacity permitting, we will. Because the success, as I said, the success of this requires a robust participation by the Ugandan legal bar. We've scheduled training for the lawyers and uh, trainers for, of the lawyers for the month of November this year, just around the corner. It is our hope, as a judiciary, that members of the bar will turn up in big numbers for the training. Phasing of the ECMIS deployment. A phased approach to the, to the operation of the ECMIS has been preferred. This is aimed at avoiding a stampede that may result in inefficient use of ECMIS. In a phase manner, we shall give notice of the court stations in operation in each phase. The stations that will pilot ECMIS are the following. When we begin, when we hit the ground running, we will restrict ourselves to the pilot scheme and the pilot areas which, which are listed here as follows. The Supreme Court of Uganda, the Court of Appeal, Constitutional Court, Ginger High Court, 
all the seven high court divisions, land, civil, commercial, criminal, family, anti-corruption, and international crimes. Then the chief magisterial areas will be Jinja, Mengo, Nakawa, Machindie, and Buganda Road. And then we've also uh, picked on three magistrate grade one courts, the Law Development Center, Kakira, and Bogembe. This will be the pilot station, the pilot courts, so that we'll see what are lessons learned, what are pitfalls which, which we need to avoid, what are the real benefits of uh, going ECMIS, and so on and so forth. Commissioning of the ECMIS. The commissioning scheduled for today, Wednesday 19th, October 2021, is a move towards addressing the critical success factors of promotion of public awareness and change management. The commissioning is to put it to the stakeholders, both internal and in external, that the ECMIS system has been developed by the court and is re ready for use. It will be the overriding tool for case management in the judiciary and therefore the need for all stakeholders to prepare for it. ECMIS go live. The go live date for the ECMIS will be at the beginning of new law year, 2022. Once ECMIS is rolled out to a given court, the court will no longer accept any paper in court. All documents will be e-filed from the premises of the party filing the case or wherever into the ECMIS. The court will set up ECMIS digital kiosk to assist the litigants who cannot e-file by themselves at their premises or chambers for a period that the judiciary will determine. The judiciary would not like to cause a catastrophe where case filing comes to a standstill because our stakeholders or public are not prepared for the use of ECMIS. The time between the commissioning and the go live is thus meant for all the stakeholders that use the court, such as the law firms, to prepare themselves for the ECMIS by installing the required equipment and undergoing the appropriate ECMIS training. So, so between now and our going live, it's a period really for preparation. We ample time, we think it will be adequate so that when we hit the ground, all the participants are well prepared to participate. Acknowledgements. The judiciary would like to thank the ECMIS steering committee, the ECMIS te technical committee, who have worked day and night along with the contractors <coughs> to ensure the ECMIS comes to fruition. We also acknowledge all the stakeholders that have provided the necessary guidance and those who have offered their chambers to be used and testing centers for the ECMIS. We thank the contractors, Synergy International Systems, and C Civil Limited for the work well done. The National Information Techn Technology Authority in NETA, Uganda, is highly acknowledged for its technical support to the ECMIS as mandated by law. But most importantly, Honorable Minister, let me thank the government of Uganda through you for the unwavering support, for the funding that has made whether the payment is in dollars or in Uganda shilling, to me, makes no sense to me. <coughs> but I want to thank the government of Uganda for putting its feet down and investing robustly in the judiciary of Uganda. <laughs> On behalf of the judiciary of Uganda, I give you the assurance we will not disappoint we will give value for money. <laughs> we'll come to a time when you'll be calling me and say, hey, don't you want some money? You don't have some projects for money? I think we'll come to that because you will know when we requisition for funds, we put it to good use. We, we, we look forward to a point where you say, 
the judiciary is not asking for something new this time, and I say, oh, I'm on the way coming. <clears throat> that is the type of uh, rapport which can, can make us together build our country in our, in our uh, various sectors. Members of the press, we also appreciate you for the coverage of this event because you are the link between us and the people of Uganda. We couldn't possibly assemble all the people of Uganda here, but it's because of you that now thousands are following this process from their sitting room, from their offices, from joints, and so on and so forth. So we are grateful to you, and uh, we, we, we look to you always as our partners. And uh, we'll continue to involve you in, in all our processes here. It is true that we shall inevitably face challenges at the start of implementing the ECMIS due to the high cost of the required equipment, limited coverage of the internet, power interruptions, and inadequate ICT knowledge for which we, mu for which we must prepare. But this will not deter us from going ahead with ECMIS. We'll, 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 we'll tackle the challenges as we go along. And uh, in the long run, the benefits of using ECMIS will outweigh its implementation cost. And we shall be here to celebrate together. Thank you for coming. And I wish everyone a successful implementation of this service for God and my country. <clears throat> Thank you very much, the Honorable the Chief Justice. Before the Honorable Minister leaves, we request for a photograph. We need evidence that you are here with us on this day. So that when we ask you to scratch our back further on this, you will be able to scratch. So we thought, my Lord, we could have it right here so that we can then continue. Piara O and your team quickly help organize us, and we have this photograph. My Lord Chief Justice and all our honorable participants, thank you very much for bearing with us uh, with our program. We are now going to continue. We have two, two more remarks or presentations, and then we will be going into the commissioning. Uh, the representative of the, of the executive director had started. It is your time to come and complete your presentation and then we shall have the last one. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, my Lord, the Chief Justice uh, of Uganda and uh, all protocol observed, it's an honor to speak after you. I hope it is legal and all right. 
Uh, we IT people are very agile, so it's quite a pleasure to be, to be speaking uh, after you. Um, allow me to just, uh, maybe I'll abridge uh, my, my remarks also, given the time and my presentation. And, uh, and I just want to say once again that I want to congratulate uh, the judiciary for successfully uh, getting to this point of launching the ICMIS and coming this far. Um, as NITA again, um, and as Director of E-Government Services, overseeing the digitization of the country and our resources and our people, reports have actually shown, uh, my Lord, that 66% of many global IT projects fail before they start. Uh, some harsh reports say that more than 60%, uh, more than 80% of the IT projects fail to deliver any measurable ROI or return on investment. So, uh, and this is majorly due to uh, poor conceptualization, you know, requirements, poor project planning, uh, and people issues, change management. So allow me again to just say that the, judici the judiciary has really defied all these statistical odds and successfully uh, got to this point of launching today. And allow me to congratulate uh, the judiciary one more time. NITA is profoundly and proudly associated and happy to have walked this journey uh, with the judiciary. So part of my job, again, as Director of E-Government Services and as NITA as a whole, which is our core business, is really to ensure that 80% of government services uh, will be online in the next four years. Now, that is, a, according to NDP3, that's a very tight deadline. So I feel that the judiciary has really, really led the way and made my work easier and the work of NITA easier. Our ultimate goal is to ensure that JELOS, the JELOS is actually fully integrated. I, we dream of a day where for a case from the police station, you know, to the DPP, the judiciary, the prisons, and back to the society, the full cycle is fully automated, integrated, and we have data coming out of there. I also want to say, my Lord, that uh, it's been amazing listening to the speakers who have come here. Clearly, the judiciary is a very digitized organization and high digital literacy. I heard them talk about APIs. APIs are not usual speak, because APIs are application programming interfaces. They allow organizations to talk to each other and share data. And, and uh, when I hear that speak happening here, uh, it tells you that this organization is highly digital and moving forward. The idea for us as government, our goal is to have one government approach. Our citizens should have integrated services uh, approached. Let me say this quickly, even as I go through and I'll abridge this presentation. Of course, the pandemic was a very difficult uh, in many ways, but a blessing when it came to rapid digitization and awareness. Uh, for instance, did you know that uh, many government meetings now uh, last, you know, 60 minutes, you know, or even 90 minutes max. Uh, they start on time. Uh, they, there's no traffic jam uh, excuses. There are no mandazi and African tea for the first 30 minutes. Why? Because of one small innovation called Zoom. And I mean, this is now a very preferred meeting uh, platform now. So the, the last one year, has, we have seen almost a, a digital leap of about five years. What the government was supposed to do in five years, we have seen that leap in the last one year in the pandemic. So for us as NITA, we are obviously excited about this era, uh, given, of course, notwithstanding the challenges of COVID, but from a digital side, I think I want to say that we are supportive of you. So as NITA, we are committed to working this journey with the judiciary to ensure we digitize judiciary, digitize JELOS, we digitize uh, Uganda, and there's really no turning back. Um, allow me to just say very quickly here, and some of this you might you, you know already. Um, technology again. Okay, so the national IT uh, authority again was established by an act of parliament uh, in 2009 and our role is to coordinate, to promote, uh, monitor information technology development within the context of national 
uh, social and economic development. Um, I won't possibly go through this in the interest of time, so I'll go to the next slide. Again, we, ha we have a portfolio of services because I want to demonstrate the support we want to give to judiciary. So allow me in a few slides. There's infrastructure services. When the power went off, somebody whispered and said, Nita, do you have a backup? And uh, we, don't, we don't handle the power here or the PA systems. However, every data, your data right now on ICMIS is actually securely stored by Nita. You don't have to duplicate server rooms, cooling, space constraints, memory, and all those technical things. NITA has that covered under the infrastructure. I'll also share with you the fact that we are connecting your courts, we're connecting your locations, and we have a disaster recovery uh, services, which, may, which is really your backup. So if Kampala went down, we have a secure location outside Kampala, which takes over seamlessly, and that covers the security element. We also have security, of course. I won't go through those. Uh, uh, from our forensic, security is a big deal. The moment you get into more digital services, you need to be aware of the cyber security challenges. So again, we have that service. E-services is really what this is. ICMIS is an e-service, and many organizations are actually getting onto the e-service side. Last week, uh, my lord, we launched the one-stop center for immigration. So now Ugandans have a one-stop portal where they can apply for their visas, their permits, their citizen cards, I mean, all in one place, and pay, and pay online. We also want to get the e-passport payments done. So we want, in the comfort of the homes, we want the population to be able to enjoy government services, and that is what e-government services is about. And lastly, of course, advisory services. You had Julian stationed here. That's part of our project management offering for key government institutions. Next. Um, so, just to go quickly to the support to the judiciary, um, sorry about this. We, I have mentioned to you that we have a, what we call a tier three ready data center. It's a high specification data center. It's the government data center. Our role as NITA is to build once and use many, which really means that we don't want every arm of government, every MDA, every ministry building and duplicating these efforts. Let NITA build the data center, you host your service there, and you focus on your core business. So I'm glad that ICBIS is an example of this shared service. It's actually hosted uh, with us. So there is flexibility in terms of capacity. You know, you'll never know what we are doing in terms of making sure you keep running. In the back end, we actually have a team that's supporting you in terms of power supply, cooling, memory and size and all those uh, details I don't want to get into. So I will just allow me to run, but has suffice it to say it is a secure data center with physical security, biometric security, surveillance, and of course the cyber uh, layers of security. I'll just go to the, the next one. Um, so the next uh, slide again, I think another area that you would be very keen to understand is uh, our coverage for the fiber optic around the country. Part of our mandate is to increase access for internet fiber connectivity throughout the country. Right now we have laid more than 4,000 kilometers uh, of fiber optic around the country. All the border posts, as you can see, are fully covered and we're still going. It's quite a job that we still have to uh, fulfill. Right now we have about 46 courts that are connected to the National Backbone Infrastructure, or the NBI, about 46. So you can see we still have work to do. About 27 transmission sites and a 24 by 7 network uh, operation center. Next. Um, we also have, I think, one other key area for every, I'm, from, I'm sure for the judiciary, uh, for the ULS, and for all our stakeholders is security. How secure are we? Um, NITA also has set up a computer emergency response team, or a SAT, and they are proactively working. Um, protection against cyber attacks for government systems, detection of cyber security incidents, and also quick response to cyber security incidents. As long as your system interfaces with the internet, you have to live with a clear and present danger of being hacked by a young man sitting in Belarus, in his room, in his garage, 
He now has access to a system in Uganda. He's never been to Africa, but he can actually get in and completely disorganize you. So NITA had to create uh, a SAT or a computer emergency response team for that purpose. This is actually a physical room. Uh, I can't disclose the location. <laughs> Then uh, maybe one of the, as I begin to close, the, I think you've all talked about integration. And my Lord, you heard about APIs that your team is doing, or the, the application interfaces. We're basically saying that today we have launched and we have be, we're working and creating awareness for something we call the UG Hub, which is basically NITA on behalf of the government is creating a platform that allows sharing, seamless sharing, secure, seamless sharing of data among uh, organizations. So we dream of a day when we have the police, the judiciary, you know, hospitals, government ministries, schools, and banks all integrated together. I want to say that our pilot has already taken off. A couple of JLOS organizations are already on, including uh, this organization. NIRA is already on. Uh, you know, we're already progressing because everybody needs to know about identification. And the idea is to connect the whole of government and then finally, citizens have a web portal or a web app on their phone where they can, they can actually do government business in the comfort of their homes because of this integration. So this is something we're doing right now. And in our phase two, we want to focus on judiciary and its partners, uh, as well as the jealous uh, sector and program. Let me begin to also narrow down. Again, we have a number of shared services as NITA. Uh, payment and SMS gateway for notifications to our people. And this is very important for, uh, for, for government institutions to be able to notify every step of the way, whatever process you're making, if you go to the next step and you're waiting, you must have a notification about how many days it will take. We have created a gateway for government that's much cheaper than the commercial space for you to utilize. We're also saying let's use a government shared resource for email addresses. My Lord, I pray that we will not have any, uh, in the judiciary at least, uh, have officers still using Gmail and Yahoo and all these uh, uh, private email addresses because they're insecure, we have no control over them. So the government of Uganda has now created a unified email, voice, video conferencing, instant messaging, and we have 83 MDAs already on. We are progressing uh, slowly because that, that number has to grow. So we hope that you can actually use judiciary.go.ug uh, email addresses for business. We have also rolled out Zoom licenses during this time. More than 120 MDAs who had completely stalled during the pandemic, lockdown, they couldn't work at all. Now they could work from their homes, business continued, the cabinet kept going, the ministries kept going, and this is something we, ha we have to continue doing because it's, uh, there's no turning back now. This is digitization, this is the new normal, we must continue. And lastly, of course, the National Data Center, apart from ICMIS, we have 80 MDAs actually hosted with us securely, and we are hosting more than 169 uh, critical government applications. All right, so I think, um, next, I think for, in terms of future services, and this is my last slide, in terms of future services, I want to say that we want to also create a pure paperless uh, court system, of course, in terms of e-signatures. So there's a part where you need to sign. And for most systems, they're automated to the point that they have to print, sign, and upload again. We are saying government needs e-signatures. And by the end of December, we shall be launching an e-signatures product for the whole government so that you have a paperless end-to-end -end online system. We also want to extend additional connectivity countrywide for the courts. So we want to support you on that. And um, it's a process, but we are laying the fiber and we will get there uh, in due course. Also expansion of hosting services for ICMIS. We want to make sure you never run out of space, you have a secure storage. So allow me therefore at this point to just uh, say thank you once again. And I believe that there's no turning back as we digitize Uganda. And I want to say congratulations once again to the judiciary. God bless the judiciary and God bless Uganda. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Wabirukamu, for that wonderful presentation. I can assure you, if you were my teacher for physics, I would be a doctor. You can talk and make someone miss his lunch while following you. Thank you very much for simplifying what would be hard for many of us. Uh, we are moving on and we are coming to our last presentation. And this will be, it will be the role of ICMIS for the members of the bar, the public, and the whole economy. This will be done by none other than the chairperson of ICMIS steering committee, and that is Honorable Justice Gondan Tende. Justice of the Court of Appeal. I read you are welcome to give your presentation. My Lord, the Chief Justice, my Lord, the Principal Judge, my Lord, Top Management, Your Worships, ladies and gentlemen, it appears I'm the last speaker and I'm a little confused. I'm not too sure that I should uh, read my prepared remarks. Nevertheless, perhaps I'll start with a little personal story. In 1968, I sat for my primary living examination. As we are preparing we were told that uh, that year the format had changed because the computer was going to mark as scripts. So we are going to have all multiple choice questions and we would have to shed the answer you are picking so that the computer can do its work. I really didn't know what that animal called computer was at the time, and I really didn't care much. We did what we were told. The following year, in 1969, I went to Form 1 in secondary school. And there I found a computer society as one of the many societies in school. I immediately decided that that was not really for me. My colleagues, who were more mathematically gifted, should spend their time there, and I'll spend my time reading novels or taking walks when the time for societies came. In 1991, I joined the judiciary and found three computers in the judiciary at the time. They were all being used for word processing, attached, as you would guess, to the office of the chief justice the Deputy Chief Justice, and the Principal Judge. Computers were still a long way off for most of us. Sometime in 1996, we were handling a case 
in the Constitutional Court, the first case being handled then. And I was required to write a ruling for one of the interim applications. which was going to be discussed the following day by our panel. So I went home. My wife happened to be computer literate, and we had a computer at home. So I started writing my draft, and she offered to type it. So as I finished a page, I would pass it over, and she would type it. And at about midnight, I said, I'm done. I said, Can we look at the document? I think power went off. We hadn't saved. It was lost. So the following morning, I just had to photo start a copy of my handwritten uh, notes for my handwritten draft to my colleagues for discussion. But that experience decided to turn, compelled me to turn around. That I should not rely, I should not be ignorant in this area any longer. It had caught up. The decision I had made in 1969 that computers were not for me was clearly wrong. Computers had come into my world, even as a judge, and I could no longer keep away from them. So ever since then, about the mid-90s, I decided to embrace the computer, both in my personal life and in my work life. As you heard this morning, now every judicial officer would have a laptop as a matter of right. We have come a long way. Two, the fact that yesterday we were in another world would not hinder us to leapfrog and come into a new world. This is what basically ECMIS will do for all of us and for our nation. The President Law Society has uh, harped on the question of the expectations of the bar. And I would like to say we shall meet them. It was, you suggested that uh, during the pilot, pilot phase, special attention should be, should be given. I, I, I was going to take issue with the word pilot because it is something we discussed extensively and decided that we shall have no pilot phase because we now must really be comfortable with this technology. In the light of our 25-year experience in the judiciary with computerization. But we called we decided to have a two-phase approach. Starting with the phase one courts, ECMIS will be implemented. We shall not be trying it out as pilot suggest. It will be implemented. And all of us, I believe, will be able to rise to rise to the game 
It, it is often said that uh, there are people that were born before computers. Of course, they, they, they are there. But my presence here and my presentation this morning, or this afternoon now, should demonstrate that that is no hindrance. It is just a question of your agreeing to move into this new world. My speech will contain the benefits uh, set out to the bar. But which have been partly expressed by my Lord, the Chief Justice, so probably I need not go over them. The question of uh, what benefits will accrue to the public about the same benefits that accrue to the bar, will accrue to the public. The role of ECMIS in the economy, it has been discussed by both the minister and my lord, the chief justice. Majorly, freeing resources that are locked out by dispute. That is what. That is a driver for economic development. The other, of course, is the question of harmony in society. What does rule of law create? It is supposed to create harmony. Th there has been, uh, and there continues to be, a debate over bail. But perhaps more, fu more fundamental, and probably by analogy, if the judiciary is able to produce a digital file, the police is equally able to do that. So is the DPP. The question of whether when a prostitution is commenced, there is probable cause before somebody is brought to the courts, is something that now should be able to be answered fairly easily, because this information must or ought to be available. So in terms of uh, what digitization will do in terms of the rule of law, in terms of criminal justice system, I think simply by analogy, I hope it will make our society move forward. I would like to join those who have spoken before me in expressing my gratitude to all the persons they did mention that have played a key role in the development of ECMIS. I would like to repeat and pay tribute to retired Chief Justice Bart Katurewe, who provided very strong leadership at inception up to the time of his retirement. He was always available to all those involved, not only to provide guidance, but to push it forward. I would like to pay tribute to the chairperson of our technology committee, just three of who, who tirelessly fought to ensure that uh, we move from where we were 
to where we hope to be. At times, this can be lonely work to provide leadership in a particular, in, in, in a small area that at times is often not quite understood. So I would like to pay tribute to you, my brother, for the work you have done and continue to do in this area. At the same time, I would like to pay tribute to our technical staff, and of course, uh, our advisor from NETA, Ms. Reju, for the work you have put in to get us where we are today. I also pay tribute, of course, to our consultants, Synergy and their partner, Sibyl. Thank you for what I hope will be a work or a job well done. Now, before I end, I would like to say we stand on the threshold of a major digital transformation in the administration of justice in Uganda. But we must be mindful of the digital divide that exists in this country and the world, locking out a significant proportion of our people into a world of digital have-nots. To ameliorate this scenario, we shall of course provide kiosks where such people can be served, initially at our courts, but hopefully it can be extended to other areas like internet cafes and uh, probably other e-government portal offices. Secondly, it is obvious that the cost of data will play a significant part in either ensuring access to the ECMIS or inhibiting access to ECMIS, and ultimately access to justice in our country. It is imperative that attention is paid to the factors, including taxation, that put access to the internet beyond the majority of our people. I thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much, my Lord, for that presentation, and especially for helping me to know that I was born when the computers were already there, since they were there in 1968. I have always believed that I was born before computers, and the computers have been there for some time. Thank you very much. Uh, we are coming to the real commissioning, which has brought us here today, and I will request the technical team to prepare for that. We have had the hybrid program, as you have seen, according to the speeches that we have had, people are speaking and coming back and all that. That means we have, we have gone digital. We want to request all of you that we have prepared something for celebrating this day. We have some luncheon and we request all of you to partake of it. So immediately after the commissioning and the, having the photographs that we shall have, I request the usher, ushering team to lead us to various points where we can be served with something, celebrate this day. So I request the Senator and your team to lead us on how we shall handle this.
So sit. So we are going into the commissioning part of it, and I request the Honorable Chief Justice, who is going to perform that event, uh, to step forward, and uh, the senior, our senior Sito will help him on how to do it, and then we shall mark it commissioned. My Lord, you are welcome to perform that event. Advise that he, he went through the school, as you told us, and uh, your, your, your professor has assured me that he, you can do it without him. So the Honorable Chief Justice is logging in into the system. And once he enters there, we shall mark it commissioned. <laughs> yeah, you can clap hard. <laughs> Thank you very much, my lord. So I, I am I'm one step ahead of uh, the principal judge, I think. <laughs> Let's give another round of applause to the Honorable Chief Justice. Thank you very much. And uh, now ICMIS is commissioned, and uh, almost all the judicial officers have been trained, and I'm very sure they can now start interacting with the system from now onwards. I thank all of you for your patience and, uh, and for your remarks. We are now going to have our photographs. And after that, we shall go for the luncheon as I had requested you to, uh, to participate. So our ushers, please get ready to usher in our guests where they are supposed to be. And uh, Apul can help us we, are, we did the photographs partially because we had to have the minister in, but now we shall have the last few photographs as we depart.
hello i am going to request the your worships the registrars to join in as as and the colleagues as the colleagues leaves the registrars and the magistrates are present plus the senior administrators senior administrators of judiciary present magistrates present registrars present immediately after this photo we shall have uh, members of the steering committee behind and then after the steering committee we shall have uh, members of the technical committee Thank you very much. I'm now going to request the members of the steering committee to stay and others who are not there to join them. The steering committee. Members of steering committee. Since there are few, I am going to request the members of the technical committee also to join. Members of the technical committee to join at once. another tent at the back of the building so feel free to enjoy the luncheon you're welcome all other participants we can have our lunch behind the building and the members the vvip members we go to courtroom one thank you very much 